All right, what's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is John and today we're going to be talking about cognitive load and how it can affect the usability of the application or interface that you're designing. Cognitive load is one of the most important things to take into consideration when designing an application or any interface really, be it physical or digital, and can really determine the success or failure of the product that you're designing. As always, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like below or even a comment for the YouTube algorithm, that would be much appreciated. And if you're interested in joining this community of creatives, it would be awesome if you'd subscribe to the channel. All right, so in this video, we'll be breaking down what cognitive load is, the psychology behind it, and how to minimize it using design and psychological strategies. We'll also take a look at some good examples of applications and interfaces that do a good job of minimizing cognitive load. Cognitive load is one of the biggest things you'll need to take into consideration when designing your interface and can really be a make or break point of your product. So first let's start off by defining what cognitive load is. Basically cognitive load is the brain power required to complete an action or task within an application or really any interface, be it physical or digital. When an application gives us information, we take that, process it, and make decisions based on it. The relative intensity of the processing power our brain requires to make the decision is the cognitive load. When designing a new tool or application, it's critical to take into account the cognitive load that will be required to complete the task. When the amount of information needing to be processed exceeds what our brain is currently able to do, the usability of the application or whatever we're designing critically suffers, as well as the overall performance. This is why cognitive load is so critical to consider when making design decisions. The Nielsen Norman Group does a great job of explaining this relatively simply. This brief passage taken from Minimize Cognitive Load to Maximize Usability, which is linked in the description and written by Catherine Whittenton, Whittenton, who is the Director of Digital Strategy at the Nielsen Norman Group, states, most computer users have learned that running too many programs at the same time can slow down or even crash the machine. We work around these limitations by closing programs when we aren't using them. Just like computers, human brains have a limited amount of processing power. When the amount of information coming in exceeds our ability to handle it, our performance suffers. We may take longer to understand information, miss important details, or even get overwhelmed and abandon the task. And although we can upgrade our computers to fit around the processing requirements that we need for running certain applications, this isn't currently possible with the human brain, unless Elon Musk does some crazy stuff with Neuralink. So this is why the idea of cognitive load is so critical to understand. Cognitive load was initially coined as a term by psychologists. They used it to describe the mental effort it took to learn a new idea, or anything about a new topic. The idea, however, was quickly adopted by user interface and product designers. And although web browsing and using some applications usually isn't as intense as actual formal learning, the idea still applies relatively well and plays into a lot of design decisions that we make. It's probably equally, if not more, critical to take into consideration when designing an application. So one example I've been thinking about recently is the idea of Instagram having either all of the functions and the vast functionality of the application listed on one page of the app or having it the way that it currently exists with all of the information tucked away in submenus and subcategories and subpages so that the information is easy to find and not too visually cluttered. I would imagine everybody would rather use the application the way it stands rather than the example that I had given. This is a great example of how cognitive load was reduced and therefore made the application significantly more usable. So now that we have a solid understanding of cognitive load and why it's so important when designing applications, let's take a look at some ways we can minimize it in the interfaces we create. Though there are probably endless ways that you can do this, we're going to talk today about three different main topics. The first being utilizing familiar patterns and symbols. The second, removing currently irrelevant information and the third being to offload tasks. As always, if you'd like to build on the ideas that I'm talking about in this video, I would love to hear from you in the comments, so feel free to do that. One of the main reasons I'm creating these videos is because I'd love to start a discussion and I love chatting about these topics, so definitely feel free to leave me a comment below. All right, so let's start off with the idea of using familiar visual cues and symbols in our applications. We'll look to Shopify for an example of this. Often in online shopping applications that we use, we'll see a shopping cart or a shopping basket used to show the items that we have selected to purchase. By taking this real world item, real world example, and translating it into a digital space, 
we have reduced the cognitive load by giving the user a symbol of what the button that they're clicking does. Shopify and many other selling platforms across the internet use this strategy very successfully and have created basically a standard of how to access your cart in an online space. This example reduces cognitive load in two ways. The first being using the real world symbol that we just talked about, and the second by creating a standardization essentially across the internet. There's very few successful examples of platforms that use anything but a shopping cart to take a look at your cart. Anything else would be essentially unnecessary confusion added to your website or whatever you're designing. This is a really important point to bring up in the creative field in general. A lot of creatives find it necessary to be totally original in their designs, which is valid. However, there's not always a need to reinvent the wheel. It's critical to not take this idea of originality too far and therefore increase cognitive load. You wouldn't want to use like a company logo or something like that to represent the shopping cart. Although it is original and there's not really an application doing that, there's probably a reason that there's not really an application doing that. This is a really simple example of this idea, but it applies across the internet. Like when Twitter switched from their starring posts or favoriting however many years ago to liking posts. Favoriting posts, well, it was a new concept, was not necessarily as successful as liking posts or using the heart icon that already established social media companies have been using like Facebook and Instagram. Essentially, adding that favorite icon, though it was basically the same thing as liking a post, was kind of an unnecessary reinvention of the wheel. It's really critical when designing applications to take this into consideration and not make arbitrary uniqueness in our designs. This is just one simple example of many, but I think it illustrates the idea relatively well. Okay, now let's move on to reducing visual clutter and removing currently irrelevant information. Remember the previous example of Instagram, the one where every function was available on one page and the other one where it is as it's currently existing with submenus and subpages. Obviously, we'd all probably rather use that submenu subpage example that currently exists rather than the one with all of the information displayed on the one page. This is a great example of how Instagram uses the reduction of visual clutter to make their design more successful. So imagine being a new user, opening up Instagram for the first time, maybe even when the app launched itself. Now, if the application existed, like the first example where everything was currently on one page and you had every function available, it would be probably a really, really steep learning curve to figure out how to use the app and most likely you would just abandon the application. Instagram probably wouldn't be nearly as successful as it was today if it was designed this way. Realistically, it probably never would have gotten a foothold in the marketplace. Now, if we look at it the way that it is today, simple and well-designed with clear communication of information architecture, we can see why the application has taken off and been acquired by Facebook. Things like the keyboard only really pop up when you're writing a comment or doing something like changing your username and then are tucked away subsequently after you're done using them. And then things like likes are tucked away in a totally separate page because if they were on the main page where your feed was, you probably wouldn't be able to see any of the pictures on your feed. Again, like I said, this stuff really seems like common sense, but it is important to take into consideration when designing your applications. All right, and then the last idea that we'll talk about is the offloading of tasks. The offloading of tasks when designing your interface can be relatively well illustrated by the idea of removing large blocks of text and replacing them with things like icons or images that help illustrate ideas of how to use the application. Again, we'll go back to Instagram for a good example of this. Would you rather see a 10 paged manual explaining all of the intricate functionality of Instagram and have to read all that? Or would you rather go through a simple onboarding process of five to 10 slides that is illustrated with pictures and quickly shows you visually how to use the application? Most likely you would pick the visual option rather than reading 10 pages full of text explaining every single function that Instagram can do. Another great way of illustrating this is the heart icon at the main menu on the bottom of the screen. Would you rather see a text block reading likes users have left on your photos, comments users have left on your photos, and likes others have left on your comments, or would you rather see the simple heart icon as it exists today? Most likely you would pick the heart icon because the amount of visual clutter and processing power that you would expend on reading that text block every single time you wanted to look at who's liking your photos 
would be kind of extraneous. This is just one of many examples in the application where they successfully offload tasks to make their application more usable. Again, like I said, all of these ideas seem very much like common sense, but they're still critical to developing a successful application and a usable application. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your time if you made it this far. As always, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like below for the YouTube algorithm or a comment if you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to join this community of creatives, it would be awesome if you'd subscribe to the channel. Yeah, let's keep promoting good design. All right, later.